Slugs from 1988 is a movie with, <laughs> you guessed it, Killer Slugs. This movie is all over the place. Most of the people killed have little to no backstory. You don't know who they are and don't know why they are important. So when they die, you don't really care. Take this guy for example. Who is he? The town drunk? A squatter? He has a dog, so that's pretty cool. But he doesn't listen to his dog not wanting to go into the house. You cry on my shoulder and I'll cry on yours. Come on. Come on. Come on in. Come on in. Matty, you don't like my house? It ain't good enough for you, huh? He goes and lays right down on the couch and bam, killed by slugs. No! 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 Get out of no, me! Next thing you know, we're in a club, and everyone is pretty bored. I know I'm bored. Another fun-filled night in Ashton. <laughs> the armpit of America and center of boredom for the entire planet Earth, right, honey? I think we better go. We do meet our main characters here, Mike and his wife, Kim. The other people are their friends, Maureen and David. David is working on this big business deal to build a shopping center in town. As Mike and Kim leave, we also meet Don and Maria Palmer. Don is the county sanitation supervisor, and Mike is the county's health inspector. You don't find that out until about an hour into the movie, and it is kind of important. Mike meets with the sheriff the next morning to evict the drunk from earlier. All they do is bicker back and forth. It's pretty funny, but the acting is just so bad. mind if I smoke, do you? I sure as hell do, Brady. You can muck up your own lungs if you want, but don't mess with mine, goddammit. Today's your lucky day, Brady. Oh, really? Why is that? Littering's a $500 fine in this state. Don't let me catch you doing it again. Sheriff, you know what they found in those candies you're reading? Rat shit. Maggots. <laughs> oh, no, Sheriff. Littering. It's a $500 fine. Son of a... When they get to the drunk's house, they find him dead. One thing this movie does have going for it is the special effects. They aren't half bad. Mike follows a trail of slime that leads to the basement, which is covered in trash, but no slugs. Harold? What? Now we have an old couple arguing in a greenhouse. There are some slug eggs on the plants, and the wife wants them gone. The eggs start to hatch, and one gets inside the old guy's glove. He puts it on, and the slug won't let him take it off. It's more like a mother every day. It's like biting my hand. This has got to be the best death in this movie. This guy is just fighting his hand, like Ash did in The Evil Dead. He even cuts it off, all because some slug was in his glove. Some sparks catch a gas can on fire, and the whole greenhouse goes up in flames. This movie is brutal. The guy cuts off his own hand to survive, then they blow him up anyway. Jesus Christ, those things are big. I told you they were big. Big, they're giant. Back at Mike and Kim's house, they find slugs in their garden, and one actually tries to bite Mike. The slugs here look like dog poop. <laughs> anyway, they bottle up some and take them to the lab, where we meet John, the resident slug expert. John, I want to ask you some questions about these. What's this? At David and Maureen's house, Maureen is making a salad and doesn't seem to notice that she's cutting up a slug and putting it in the salad. David has a bad reaction to dinner, but he has a big business meeting tomorrow. 
so he doesn't want to go to the doctor. Now at some kid's house, they wait for her parents to leave, and her boyfriend sneaks in. Not much to say here. This isn't as cool as the greenhouse kill. Some slugs cover the floor, she trips and falls, and somehow these slugs kill her with some of the most gruesome special effects. Her boyfriend tried to get out through the window, but he falls in too. We finally get a little bit of an explanation. Don is finding half-eaten rats, cats, and even a large dog in the sewers. He explains that back in the 50s, there was a toxic waste dump in the area, of course. <laughs> when they went to bulldoze the area for the new shopping center, they released some poison gas that are affecting the slugs. It was a toxic waste dump. Every plastic and chemical plant in the area dumped into it. Then about 20 years ago, they filled it in. You know, Don Palmer, you're a fountain of good news. I'd like to propose a toast. David is now at his big business deal for the shopping center, and he is noticeably sick. He goes to take a drink, and blood starts pouring out of his nose into his drink. He's freaking out, falls down, and worms burst out of his head. Where'd you get these? Mike takes a sample of the worms to the lab. It turns out that the worms are parasites that are found in the bloodstreams of, yep, slugs. He also reveals that these slugs do eat meat, their slime can kill you, the slugs reproduce asexually, and they're breeding in the sewer. Another guy dies. No idea who he is, but he's dead. What is this, Brady? I want you to cut off the water in the south end section of town immediately. Is this your idea of a joke, huh? No, it's not my idea of a joke. Now, the water in that section of town has been contaminated by a mutated form of slug. Mike goes to the water treatment plant to try to get them to shut down the town's water supply. Mike looks pretty crazy here at this point, and of course, they don't listen to him. What the hell are you talking about? With David dead, the business people meet with the mayor to sign the papers to build that shopping center. Mike barges in, talking about a disaster, and he gets the business people worried. We have a potential disaster on our hands. Potential disaster? Mike explains about the toxic dump and the slugs in the water supply, but in the end, they too think he's crazy, and they sign the papers for the shopping center. You mean to tell me if I turn on the water tap, a killer slug is going to come out and get me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's just see. Shall we finish signing the papers? Absolutely. Uh, what's this? Back in the lab, John has found a chemical that can kill the slugs. So they plan on dumping it in the sewer and just hoping it doesn't blow up the entire town. The three men all go over the plan one final time. Mike and Don will go down into the sewers to push the slugs to one location. Then John will dump the chemical down into the sewer, blowing up all the slugs. We should have enough to do it. I hope so, because we're only getting one shot at this. They find the main breeding ground and drop some bait in to get them all in that one place. Up on the surface, John can't get the manhole open, and the sheriff catches him. Don gets the escape hatch open, but water rushes in at him, knocking him right into the slugs. Mike tries to save him, but the slugs are just too much, and Don dies.
Mike then climbs up the manhole. Why they didn't just do that in the first place, I don't know. Do it, Bowie! But Palma, where is she going? Mike climbs up, pushing right past the sheriff, and they're able to dump the chemical into the sewer. The sewers light up, blowing up the slugs. And most of the town. There's no way these guys aren't going to jail for this, but the sheriff just doesn't care one bit. Kim and Mike walk off as the fire department cleans up the mess, but one slug remains, and that's all that's needed to make more slugs. Well, that's Slugs, a jumbled mishmash of a movie. It jumps all over the place. There's a little bit of story, then a death, then about 15 minutes of filler, rinse and repeat. The acting was bad, laughably bad. But the music was pretty good and the special effects looked great. Real bloody and gruesome. All in all, I give slugs two out of four dog poop slugs. It's Mike Brady. Put Sheriff Reese on the phone. He ain't here, he's out at Ashton Farms. We got us another dead body over there. You what? Amazing, ain't it? Before yesterday, the most exciting thing we had around here was a Saturday night drunk getting naked and running down Main Street. Now we got a new dead body showing up every 10 minutes. Look, now listen to me, Dobbs. You tell that fat bastard to get his ass over to Frank Phillips' office immediately. You got that? 